chose him. Thus as cool that may be, Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord, stop all of his name, from age to age the same. I love thee because 
We'll sing the first and the chorus. Speed it all, one, eight, four. The first verse with the chorus, Jesus paid it all, one, eight, four. It's another wonderful Sabbath day. And blessed us and we have come this morning to worship him. Let us stand and turn to 330. 330. Take my life and let it be. 330. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move and the impulse of Thy love and the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and 
You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I trust you had a truly blessed and prosperous week. No answer. Church is quiet. Okay. As I squeezed myself between two passengers, I gave out a long, tiring sigh. <sighs> the gentleman beside me then stated, you sound very tired. Yes, I replied. It was a long and hot day at work. After talking back and forth, he stated that he knew of a way that I could work smarter and not harder. Eager to know, I asked, what is it? Before I give you any information, you have to answer one question. What is the one thing you want the most of in life, but you can never get enough of it? Knowledge, I replied, because from it, I can know how to do everything. Then I will be able to get all the things that I want. Good answer, but that's not it. For years, I pondered on this question. Then finally, I got the answer. Time. Time is a hot commodity. Everybody wants it, plus extra. Students studying for an important exam beg for it. Parents of a dying child pray for it. A, work, a worker preparing a report for a big project needs it. The housewife and mother at the end of a busy day craze for it. Our Sabbath school theme today is Stewards of Time. We'll now have the scripture reading. church let us stand for the scripture reading it is taken from proverbs 6 from 6 to 8 i will read in your hearing he said go to the ant thou sluggard consider our ways and be wise which have no guide overseas our ruler gathered our food in harvest Let me go again, I think I made some mistake here. He said, provided her meat in summer and gathered her food in harvest. This is the word of God. Just kneel for prayer. Eternal, immortal, invisible God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we lift you up, we magnify you, we worship you because you are worthy. We thank you, O Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath day. We have seen many Sabbaths, but never seen this one. We thank you for life. It is so refreshing to be in your awesome presence. As we come, Lord, we ask that you will empty us from everything that is unlike you. We pray for those who are, who are here this morning and those who are on the way. We ask that you will hasten their footsteps so that the blessings that you have in store, we all may receive. it. I pray in a special way this morning for our young people the youth of this church. Father, we know that all of us are going through challenges and crucibles. But the young people, I am praying for them especially this morning because they are the future of the church. They will be the men and women for tomorrow. We pray that you will stretch your hands out even at this time in this congregation, those who are here and those who are not here. 
Father, we pray that you will anoint them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Help them that they will know that there is a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Help us to be loving and kind and patient with them because we are the older ones and they are coming up. So we pray, Lord, that you will help them to hold on to your unchanging hand so that when time and earth shall be no more, they will hear from you, well done, O good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy Lord. We are, as we lay this foundation in prayer this morning for the Sabbath school, we ask that you will give us the power, give us the strength, whatever we are asked to do, that we will do it in spirit and in truth. I pray in a special way for the Sabbath school again. Have thine own sweet way. And what I fail of ask, dear Father, please grant it even more. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. We have been here throughout the night as we that of our pain. And I just want to use this opportunity again to welcome each and every one of you to Sabbath school this morning. It is our joy, it is our privilege to have you here with us, my brothers and my sisters. I can't imagine coming to church, particularly on a Sabbath morning, only to greet members of the Woods family. This morning, this morning, I want to extend a warm Christian welcome to all who are here present in God's house. And so if you're happy to be in God's house this morning, if God has been excellent to you this week, yes, there might be some pain here and there, but if God has been an excellent God uh, towards you this re week, won't you just lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. Amen. God has been good. And if you are here, not a member of the Glendavon uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church, won't you just lift your hand and give a wave and say, thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm seeing a few and I'm hearing uh, a few voices. And so as time comes, uh, more will join. Uh, do we have anyone here with us this morning? Uh, not a member of any uh, Seventh-day Adventist church. If you are here, uh, just give us a little wave like this. We want to especially acknowledge you. All right, uh, there may be around somewhere, uh, and so we welcome you into God's house. Welcome, Sister Carla Lee, and to those of you who are online, those who are on YouTube, those who are on uh, Facebook, we welcome you wholeheartedly into the house of God. And as you worship with us, as you lift your voices and praise God today here from the Glendevon Seventh-day Adventist Church, whether physically or online, may as the praises go up, may the blessing come down and fill our hearts with joy. Good morning, Sabbath School. This morning, I'll be doing the mission report, and it is coming to us from Bolivia. Now, automatically, I ask myself, where's Bolivia again? So I Googled it, and I remember that it was in South America, right next to Brazil, south of Brazil. And so the title of our mission story today is Miracle in Pandemic. Now, Bolivia went into lockdown, and the COVID, and this was because of the COVID-19 pandemic. All churches were closed, and worship services and other church activities were prohibited 
for fear of spreading the virus. And we can all attest to that because we were in a similar experience. Small groups of believers began to meet in homes in El Alto, the second largest city in Bolivia. Guillermo prayed earnestly. Guillermo was an Adventist for a while, and he was also affected by the pandemic. And he asked himself, how could people worship amid a pandemic? That's what he's, he was asking himself. As Guillermo prayed, an idea formed in his mind. Why not leave the city and hold worship services in a deserted place? So since you could not have worship services in a building, why don't we have it in an open space? And that was his idea. With much prayer and with the help of several church members, he decided to worship God on one of the many hills around the city. The group chose a hill that in the Amara language is called Wanya Kuta, which means dry lake. This place was located at the foot of a snowy mountain. Now, to begin, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was really um, attracting a lot of persons in the beginning because when he started his little um, outdoor church, only eight male members came, right? And he was a little bit discouraged, but he said that, you know what? I have eight members for Sabbath school. Let's continue. The men were not discouraged, it said, and they continued to meet every Sabbath. As they prayed and worshipped, People kept coming, and after three months, the church had grown to 100 people, from 8 to 100. Now, this included Adventists, Evangelicals, and members of other Christian denominations. So this thing was growing. Now, you would think that these persons would not meet if it rained or so on, but not, that wasn't the case. They said whether it was cold, whether it had rain, whether they were weary, whether they were discouraged, men and women and young people and child came from far. They said that they came from as far as two kilometers up the hill, um, sorry, several miles, and came two kil kilometers up the hill. A single thought prevailed in their minds. Let's keep walking. God is with us. They trusted in God. And with meditation, fasting, and prayer, they kept onward. Kneeling on the hill, remember that they are outdoors now. Kneeling on the hill, they prayed with fervent joy to the Lord. It was an enormous blessing to meet on the hill every Sabbath. Many people were seeking the Lord amid struggles, and we know how it was during COVID, and we're still experiencing the tail end of COVID. A lot of persons lost their jobs. It was the same thing here in Bolivia. A lot of persons were ill. Outside of being sick with COVID, a lot of persons were ill. And they said that the persons remain fervent to this outdoor meeting. Sometimes uh, the services were so good, they left the hill with tears in their eyes. And they were assured that their faith in God would stand. They remained, they thought that God was in control, and this was what wrought great miracles in their lives. They were encouraged with the text, Philippians 4.19, which says, and my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. As the world slowed down because of this pandemic, the preaching of the everlasting gospel did not stop. As a result of this hilltop miracle meetings during the pandemic, 13 people gave their lives to the Lord. Amen. Now imagine, they moved from eight, and they went up to 100. And remember that all of this 100 was, it wasn't members. It was just persons who were coming from other denominations. Right? And 13 persons were baptized, and we say amen to that. Today, 
the Faithful Hilltop Group has become a company of more than 50 members who meet every Sabbath in a rented hall. Despite the pandemic, the gospel is spreading in El Alto, the second largest city in Bolivia. But parts of El Alto did not have an Adventist church. And so we are encouraged today, brethren, that we should share our 13th Sabbath offering so that we can continue to encourage the beautiful and the marvelous work that these members are doing with their outdoor ministry. We ask that you continue to pray for them. We, we ask that you continue to just go to God on their behalf so that they will continue this marvelous work that they're doing in Bolivia. Have a blessed Sabbath. There are many passages that encourages us to be wise with our time. Some advise us not to be lazy. Others point that there is a season for everything under the heavens. But mostly, they point to God and his infinite wisdom and love. Pregnant women don't just snap their fingers and the baby is born. It takes a full nine months, time which she and her partner uses to prepare for this child. Just the same, we need to plan for the different aspects of our lives. As youth, take full advantage of our education system. Do what you can know to pass your exams. If not, you might fail one or two and must take the extra time to resit. And sometimes these are courses that are necessary in order for you to move on to higher education. Once you are born, if you don't die, if you don't die when you are young, you must become ageable. I believe it is sad that after working 40 plus years, day in, day out, 40 hours per week, sometimes even more. At the end of the day when you retire, you have to hustle to put food on your table and a roof over your head. Brethren, youth, prepare for your golden years. We need to be good stewards of our time. Try best as possible to purpose to prepare for the future and do everything you can in a time, Limano. I believe that the work and social life need balance. Sometimes one gets more attention than the other, and if you guess, it is work. We can get so caught up in working to achieve that we forgot that we forget that God created us as social beings. We spend hours grinding at the wheel and never a moment to stop, to smell the fresh air, to listen to the birds sing, or bask in the joy of the voice of a plain and laughing child. Church, we are not robots, and we must find time to relax and to do things that are not work-related. Do things that are not taxing to the mind and the body. Things that will put a smile on your face and a joy in your heart. Some of us, some of us want a life we can't afford. And so we place, and so we place expensive things on our budget. As of such, we have to work harder and keep going day in, day out in order to meet these means. Brethren, live within your means. Live within your means with time, consistency, and dedication. All things are possible. Be good stewards with your time. Also, the social life provides a mean by which you can witness to others. You can also develop a hobby something that you enjoy, something that can bring you closer to Christ. Of all the things we could spend our time doing, family time is the most important and essential of all, especially if you have children. The Bible says, 
Train up a child in the way that he must go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We often get so busy that we fall short on this, and we overuse the rod of correction. Yes, the rod of correction is meant to keep the child in line. However, if we are consistently providing instruction and guidance, we wouldn't have to use it that much. But how can this be done if parents are busy with other things? The more time you spend with your kids, the more you will be able to mold them into constructive individuals for society, preparing them for tomorrow and the life to come. Never forget family worship. Here you teach your little ones about God. Through family worship, they can ask their question and parents can notice little changes in their family. Be good stewards of your time with your family. Husbands and wives, did you know that dating should last throughout your married years? Remember all those nice little things you used to do before you got married or when you just got married? What happened? Didn't you love those stuff? Weren't they nice? So why stop doing it? It can be some simple little things. It doesn't have to be expensive. A movie night, when you tell the kids to be quiet and for the next two hours, do not bother mommy and daddy. You can get up early in the mornings. There are many free beaches in Montego Bay and you and your spouse can go to whichever one you please. And little and little, a little note to remind how much you love your spouse. All these little inexpensive things, they go a far way. Keep the niceness. Keep the niceness going, married people. Remember, things, remember, looks will fade. Shape will diminish. Strength will weaken. But those nice memories you form in your young days, they will last when you get mature. And these are the memories that you will reflect upon. Husband and wives, be good stewards of your time. At this moment, we're about to enter into the lesser review. So we're going to ask the children to go upstairs. The young persons you can meet on the outside by the tree. And I'm going to ask all the teachers to please stand. Brother Bloomfield, could you please pray for us? Amen. Teachers, you have five minutes to interact with your students, after which Brother Leroy McDonald Sr. will be doing the lesson review in one.
good for us to be of the Lord. He had spared our life and we are here not just to greet him, worship, to worship him in the beauty of holiness. I'm going to invite you to turn to the lesson, lesson number one. Lesson number two and the topic is, come talk with me church. The topic is, what is the topic? The crucible that comes. Now, let me make this very clear. Now, there are two microphones in the passage. One here and one down there. Once you have a question or a comment, you must go to the mic. So you stay here and indicate to me. You have to go to the mic and then I will acknowledge you. Is that clear, everybody? All right. So the crucible, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, please aid us with your Holy Spirit to understand your word and to apply it to our hearts. And we pray that we will live in harmony with you. And when you come, save us, I pray, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The crucible that comes. And the dictionary would have defined the container or a vessel that used to melt substance. A various type. Right, so that is one. Crucible is varied, or the trials that come at Alberta is varied. One, a uh, crucible by, crucible come by Satan. Are you with me? Crucible come by God to purify us. Are you agree with me? And crucible come to help us to bring us into maturity. You understand that one? All right. And, and this, so they are all different types of crucible. Now, the lesson this point us in different crucible. And I want us to understand that as Christians, we live in this world of the burnout. There is a buckle between God and, and the devil. And we have to learn how to live through that. And we are not alone, but we have who with us? Christ Jesus with us. Now, the memory text is important. And let us not take it simple. Listen to the apostle. He said in 1 Peter 4, verse 12 and 13. He said, Beloved, do not think it what? Strange concerning fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad and exceedingly in joy. Now, 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 the text, the text, Ella Hawkins. Now, the Peter was addressing, first he greet the brethren. He greet, beloved, so that we are on one. But his intention, Sister Alex, was to counsel the, the saints because Peter saw what was coming. So he indicated, he bring the burden into counsel to remind them as long as there is controversy, the devil will come to pleasure. So he want the brethren to brace themselves, to be encouraged when these trials come. To hold firm to God. And all of us will go to a crucible. Why is it that the brethren would think it's strange? Was it a young church? Was it a church that had many converts in it? Was that church that believed, yes, 
me in a church now, so I'm safe. I'm not going to go through no tests or no trials like when me out there. Jesus Christ is going to protect me and I will just have a smooth walk in heaven. Was it that kind of church? Peter, was, Peter was simply saying here, yeah. look, the road to heaven is not as smooth as you think. You're going to be tested. Mm -hmm. You're going to be tried. But he said, look, you must remain steadfast. You remember when Saul started having difficulties? Saul went to a physician that was not of God to sort out a, a problem that he caused on himself. He drifted away. And the question was asked, wasn't there a, isn't there a God in Israel? So the question is that when you come upon fiery trials, it is a part of your training process yeah. to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. You see, we are born in sin and it's shaped in iniquity. That's what David realized um, how he was formed. Yeah. And so something had was to be done that makes us qualify to go to heaven. Number one, who know our number one, the whole man have to die. Yeah. And the whole man, as you know, brethren, those of us who know about sin, I don't know about you, but I know about sin. The whole man will not go easily. He will struggle to stay alive, but he has to die. Yeah. That is the reason why we have troubles in the church, brethren. Because if we don't want to allow the whole man to die. Yeah. If the whole man does not die, then your trials will not be over. All right, thank you. All right, so, so that's a key point. And so, so, so to encourage the church, because there are many of us sometimes we think that when we come to the church, to church, become a part of the family of God, it will be easy ride. Everything will be. And somewhere down the line, we start to buck out to various things start to happen and we give up. There are many people who stop coming to church because of the trials that they face. But Peter warned the church and he said, well, when you see this thing come, don't, 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 don't think it's strange. And as you said, it's a part of your a process you have to go through. But your trials and our kids and mine will be different. And we have to understand that. That, that, so let me run and say quickly that some of these trials, Ella Bernard, it is not God who give it to us, but God allow it so that we can go through to prove, to be tested, so that we can hold on. Ella can go to the mind, right? So that is something. So Peter was concerned, so he warned and he counseled the church. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things that we have to understand and accept yeah. um, where crucibles are concerned, we have to understand a number of things. Number one, Peter highlighted the fact that don't think it to be a strange thing. In other words, when you see it come, don't begin to murmur and complain and say, yeah. what is this? What is this that I have done? Because uh, this was one of the thought or yeah. the ideology from Bible time that when certain things come upon you, even in the event of Job, um, yeah. persons begin to think, is it that you have done something wrong? Yeah. Uh, was it that you have done something wrong or somebody for you? And as a result of such action, these things are coming upon you. So Peter is saying, don't think it's strange. Understand that it is a part of the journey because there must be a purification period. Um, any of us who understand the whole process of exercising to um, become toned and trimmed and, and well built, the process of exercising, it is not easy. But we understand that you have to go through it to get the desired result. Likewise with the Christian walk. But also we bear in mind that there is what we refer to as humanity. Uh, wherein it is customary that when we um, come up against disappointments, against um, the undesirable, uh, there may be a part of us that may want to question and ask why or to seek an easier way out or not even an easier way out but to seek an escape but what happens or what needs to be done is that there must be a submission to the will of God and to accept and understand that this is just a part 
of the process in order for us um, to share in the glory of Christ, we must endure. And these things are there to refine us. And so if we don't go through them, we will not be refined as our Christ wants us to be refined. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brother Broomfield. It's working, it's working. Yes, in this life you're going to have trials and tribulations, crucibles of all stripes and kind. Yeah. Whether sickness, broken marriages, joblessness, you name it. But the good thing about it, my brother, is that when we have gone through all these crucibles and we make it over the other side, which is heaven, we're going to look back. We're going to look back on all the trials that we have gone through this life and we're going to say it was worth it because nothing down here can be compared to the weight of glory that awaits us. So that is the good news that we have to go through all these trials, but it's only for a time. Yeah. And the second coming of Christ will end all of that. So we just need to hold on. I just want to ask a question, brother. Yeah. Very important question. So when you go through trial in, trial, uh, fire trials in Glendevan, yeah. I said, I mean, I'll come back here. I'm not coming back here. People do this and people, you're going to go to Nahoud. So you're not going to go to any trials up there. Are you going to go to Panty to be a church? Are you going to go to Babatam Road? There's no trials up there. The people up there are perfect saints of God. Brethren, if you're going to trials, examine yourself. Because some of the trials that you are going through, you cause it on yourself. Hmm? Examine yourself. And you know the reason why? You must examine yourself. Self examine. Well, a brutally honest self examination will help you how to subdue yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We must understand this thing that nobody will be going to heaven untried. Ellen White says, every feet that grace the streets of heaven will be a conqueror. She goes on to say, the greatest conquest of all will be self. Mm -hmm. So some of the trials that you are going through is what we cause on ourselves. But as you say, the Lord could remove it. But when the Lord look at me, I can't thank her and turn. I can't thank her and steer. He said, go through it, Bernard. You need to be refined. Yes? Yes. Them bad ways that you have there. Take some beating. Yes? And, 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 and in, in, in the process, let me see what you're going to shine, say. Let me see if you're going to get arrogant and leave the church. Or are you going to submit yourself to Christ? And, and have that. As a matter of fact, the, the, the memory text say, you know, in the end, really? when you allow yourself to go, you will be glad. But listen now. Let me tell the church this. If you refuse to go to trials, the same place where you leave them, inspiration says, the Lord is going to cause, cause you to pass over the same ground with a piercing. If so if you want to be an overcomer, you have to go through. There ain't no way around it. You must go through your trials okay. to hone your skills and to prepare yourself to go to, to, for translation. Thank you very much. Now, why we go through all of that? And as we are going through the Christian part, tell the doctor, there is a surprise that many of us didn't prepare for. The surprise of death, job loss, sickness, various type of thing. The little saving that you put up, all of a sudden it just disappear. And then you start to wonder where is God? But you are going through a period that is lowing you. You remember the young rich ruler? Yes. He saw how all of the other youngsters were clamoring to Jesus. And he said, good master, what must I do? In other words, I want to enter the kingdom. So what must I do? Jesus said to him, what? What did Jesus say to him? Keep the commandment. He said, Master, from me a little boy, I may do that. So he cannot be that. So Jesus said to him, all right. 
look straight in the eye and read him up. Because he have a problem. He said, go sell what you have and give it to the poor. What the Bible said he do what? Went away sorrowful because he had a problem with giving. Just like So we can't, Sister Cloud, want to make it to heaven, but we don't want to go to. So the Lord have to allow certain things to happen to some of us. So just one meal at a time. So probably all you see is lunch, but you don't see nothing for tonight. But as you trust in him, he provides for you. So that is God. So surprises. Walking with God can be a challenging thing. There's a man in the Bible that come up, Peter. He go to it. Shipwreck. All night fishing. Wave and so forth. Catch nothing. He had a bad high or a bad leg. And he cried out, but did the Lord heal him? Huh? No. Eh? Paul, Paul, I said, yeah. Paul. Did the Lord bring healing upon him? Still have the high trumping matter. And so some of us, brethren, including myself, sometimes we have a little fault, a little thing and we want to get rid of it. But if a Lord allow it, if a Lord move it, we move from him. So he have to keep us. You ever watch the horse? They put blinders on some of them so that they cannot be distracted by evangelists. Because so anything distracted, they, they pull out a ring and gone. So they have to put blinders. The Lord had to put blinders on some of us. Because we are easily distracted. So whatever blinders the Lord put on us, keep it. Some of us have arthritis. The Lord will never move it. Are you with me? So as we go through this, we have some long here sickness. The Lord allow it to keep us in check. And we must rejoice. And we need to understand the God that we serve. Right? Any question? No. So we move on. The crucible of Satan. The crucible of Satan. Now, in 1 Peter... Five, right? There's a text that we well know. He said, What be what be what sober and because you're what walk it about what like a run seeking whom he may what devour. Now, now we are to wake up now, and even if we close on this point, we are to wake up now. The apostle. Under inspiration, warn the church, be sober. So in other words, now is not the time for us Larkins, to drink alcohol because we're going drunk. Now is not the time to overheat. We be going be cut with some going overload and we want to sleep and we're drowsy. So the apostle said, be sober, wake up now. Get a bath and refresh. And you must be brilliant. Be on your, be on the watch. Look out, because the adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion. Now, I like to watch animal shows, but sometimes I can't take the killing part. But the lion, no, very now and again, you see an other animal destroy the lion. But the lion is the king of the jungle. He not have to go too far. He just roar two times. Everybody run in his direction. And him choose him prey. I'm coming. The devil is as a roaring lion, Paul, describe him. 
And he said, we must be sober because if you're not sober in a virgin, you get caught. So he said, we must be wide awake, be vigilant, be on your watch, watch where you're going because the devil has a roaring lion walk it about seeking whom every day. Brother Barney. Yes, Brother Mark. Yeah. I watched the lion at work and he flew the leopard. How did they capture their prey? Did they just walk like this? No, no. they crouch low. Yeah. And the prey sometimes and is not aware of how close he is. And then in a split second, he would pounce upon that prey and tear it asunder. Yeah. Now, the devil knows our weaknesses. That's how we conquer you, you know. Yeah. Job wasn't a weak man. But the Lord put him to the test. And the crucible of Satan, the Lord said, I'm not going to allow you to kill him. But test him otherwise. Mm -hmm. You see, and Job, the, the devil said to, to, to the Lord, it's because you bless him so much. That's why yes, I forgot to test him. But you see, Job have this strength of character. Yeah. Believing in his God firmly. And all the money and stuff that he had. His strength was not built on these things. Mm -hmm. So Job stood firm. And when he was tested, the end of the book said, And Job died of a ripe old age. And all that he has lost was given back to him tenfold. Yeah. The question is, whenever we're going through our crucibles, what are we thinking? Are we thinking that the Lord has ditched us? Or are we thinking that, thinking that better days are coming? Yeah. The devil knows our weaknesses and he will continue to pray on us until we overcome. Thank the you. question is, have you recognized your weakness and knows that this is where I am vulnerable and this is where I am going to ask the Lord to strengthen me so yeah. that I can become an overcomer? Thank Pray. you. As we wrap up, Ella Hawkins. Let me make it very quickly in a few seconds. In the art of war, anyone who thinks that the only strategy that you need to have to overcome your enemy is skill and tact and weaponry, you're, 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 you're bound for failure. Yeah. One of the advantages that you must have is to be aware of your enemy. Yeah. You must be aware of your enemy. You That's can never point, underestimate your enemy. And even as we look at the fiery trials of the enemy, one of the things that we have to be mindful um, of elder, and, and I have seen things like this manifested in the church ever so often, and I question um, these things. We have to be very careful of some opportunities that presents its way. And we have to ever be so mindful, elder, yeah. to pattern crisis prior in Gethsemane, not my will, but thy will be done. Because bear in mind, elder, sometimes the devil will set us up. Yeah. You know, the devil give you what seems to be an opportunity, and I'm not saying anything against anybody. It could be an opportunity to go overseas, and it promises to be better. When you look on the reality, sometimes it's worse. Your family is destroyed. Um, you lost so much things. Sometimes a job promotion comes up. But you have to be very vigilant and pray about it. There are some little perks sometimes that if we don't have a spiritual eyesight, elder, we're not going to see them. And this is what the devil does to watch us and, and watch our inclinations and our desires and set the bait to catch the fish. Thank so we have to be very careful even of some opportunities that present themselves to be very good. Amen. And you use a key word that was the key for that aspect of the lesson, to be aware, right? And we have to bear that in mind. Now, as I wrapped up, um, there are two things that I want us to pay attention to keenly. Sin of its consequence. You didn't hear that? The crucible of sin. Sin of its consequence. And we all are to suffer the consequence of sin. All right? So God, we have to be careful. So 
to glo- and we are to glorify him and sin does not have the final say. It is God. So we trust in him. One day sin will come to end. Brother Carr, as we wrap up. Yeah. Ellen White says that Satan pours pours poison in the air, make us sick. And we need to be strong in our faith. Yes. When people Our practice is as we feel sick, we go to the doctor. We borrow money and go to the doctor. When the devil wants to show up himself, show how much power he has to create sickness and to remove sickness, We need to be careful. We need to go down on our knees when we feel sick that the creator of our bodies can recreate it if we allow him to. So be careful. Be careful when you take sick who you go to for advice. Because the same agency that creates your sickness will cause it to go also. And then you say, God, heal me. Praise God. Thank you. Final point. Yeah. 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 Because even with our thoughts, he mentioned that he will give us sufficient grace to allow us to bear it and to continue to live for him. So let's just put all our faith and our trust in God. He will give us the strength to deal with our challenges. And so I say to the church, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wonderful lesson review indeed, right? Yes, wonderful lesson. So not every crucible that you go through is meant to be conclude this morning. As we close off Sabbath school, remember to use your time wisely. Young people, do what you can when you should. Time is precious. Do not waste it. The young has it and the old wants more. Design a plan for your life and spend time working on it. Youth, also remember it's best to start preparing for retirement when you are young. Those of you who are busy working, remember don't forget to have a social life. The mind needs to rest, so find a hobby and make as much time as possible for it. Parents, children are a gift from God. They don't stay small for long, so cherish every stage of their lives. Don't be so busy you don't teach them about God or how to use, don't be so busy you don't teach them about God, but instead uses the rod of correction often. No, you need to instruct and guide them in the way that they should go. Husband and wives, remember the day will come when all you see will fade, but the sweet memories of your younger days will last in the more mature age. Time is a precious commodity, so do not waste it. It is the master of us all, so be good stewards of your time. Do enjoy the rest of the Sabbath.
But I'm such an earthly child His love is so big, mine is so small He's made me in His image I've made a life of pride I hardly take half to and sisters let's go again happy Sabbath everyone how are you feeling today are you feeling blessed if you are blessed won't you say amen? amen if God has been good to you won't you wave your hands and praise the Lord indeed that sounds more like it God has indeed been very very good to us and we are here again just to use this minute or two to mention the fact that yes whilst we are in the midst of campaign 2022 church campaign prepare to meet thy God with evangelist uh elder michael henry and it's going really good the man of god is really powering the word rock solid messages from the bible are being communicated to the church and to the community of glen devon but while in crusade mode we are also church my mic is failing me. While we are in crusade mode, we are also in what? Harvest mode. And for Glendevon Church, harvest each year is a very big thing. Are you with me, somebody? 
And this year, our harvest theme is bent coming out of the pandemic, coming out of the struggles, coming out of the increased uh, inflation, which we are now experiencing. Bent, but not. My church is. Uh, Mike is giving us a little challenge. Bent, but broken. And as a result of that, what do we do? We give thanks. Amen. We give the Lord thanks. And so we just want to remind you, as uh, Sabbath school members, of the work that we are required to do. Yes? By inviting individuals. It's for crusade and it's for harvest. So we get extra points added. As a matter of a fact, some units have been doing extremely well because they have invited uh, visitors to their class. The spirit of prophecy and the many classes have gotten as points because they are reading the chapters and have been doing the quiz and uh, getting it correct. Now, uh, for the next term, we are looking at chapter 24 in the great controversy. Chapter, what did I say with chapter? Yes, chapter 24. Thank you, sir. And guess what? Chapter 24. Last week, the preacher preached about the sanctuary. And we will review that. It is in Holy of Holies. And that has to do with the old sanctuary message of the church. And so, yes, it will help to cement the messages which you have heard. So we are looking at chapter 24 in the Holy of Holies. Please read that chapter in the Great Controversy. And so, my brothers and sisters, harvest is coming up even as we are in crusade. Remember, the main aim is to reach out to souls, to win them for Christ so that they can come and experience the salvation. Finally, I will mention that not many of our classes on our list, we have as much as 27 classes including the children's division uh, classes and uh, so far guess how many classes have reached their financial goal guess how many how many how many two sister Diley. just that uh how many somebody says five somebody says we have five and we have seven sister car uh, saying seven because perhaps your class has reached its goal to add to the number. Well, if it has not yet, we will work hard at that. Isn't that so? Yes, indeed. But guess what? So far, Sister Nan, only two classes have reached the financial goal. And just to encourage you, you see, Brother McDonald's class, just guess how much they have brought in already. That's unit at the back. Uh, there over Brother McDonald's class. Guess how, how, how much they have brought in? The goal is 50,000. They have brought in over 129,000. What? A true? Yes. Stand up, Brother McDonald's class. Stand up, Bridget. Stand up, Bridget. Brother Max's class over to the back there. Sorry, sorry. Over this side. Please stand. Stand, Bridget. More are you. Stand up. Yes, Sister Stewart. I know you work hard. What's that? No, well, up to last week's report. You could, you could wait till next week, we say it. All right. So they are going towards uh, the 200,000 mark. Bridget, look at that. And I must stop now, but it must be a motivation for us to work. You with me, somebody, and my class up the front here, poor we little and uh, whatever, but we are over 54,000 already, so we at least reach the little goal. You hear what I'm saying? And we will uh, continue to work, and I must commend the member and members who have worked. So, brethren, please uh, let us continue to do what we can, not just for harvest but for the campaign bring out the visitors and for them all we have very special gifts god bless you as we close off with our harvest song at this time
drifting by the hand grip. I wonder what I have done to make my way so hard to run. And I said to my soul, to worry, the Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I bow, he will take away all your sorrow. Let him have your burden now. When the Lord upon me gets heavy, the way to show right on my brow. I said to my soul, don't you worry, the Lord will make a way somehow. Announcements for Sabbath, July 9, 2022. Harvest Thanksgiving will be August 6, 2022. Jamaican colors will be worn and it will be under the theme, bent but not broken, we give thanks. All Sabbath school classes must remember that their goal is $50,000. It's summertime and summer camp is in full swing. West Canoka 2022 will be at Camp Braham, St. Elizabeth, July 19 to 26. The cost is $4,500, and the bus fare will be $2,500. Seventh Adventist Church, Swall Spring, will be having their annual Harvest Thanksgiving service on Sabbath, July 23, 2022, under the theme, Giving My Best to You, Lord. The program will commence at 9 a.m. This is the first reading of request for a transfer of membership for Robert Lewis, from Seventh-day Adventist Church Glendevon to Seventh-day Adventist Church Portland Cottage in Veer Clarendon. The St. James Community Service Federation presents lunch on 2022 at the West Jamaica Conference on Thursday, August 4. Please see any member of the Community Services Department to for, for further information. Sister Alex Walker would like to meet with all youths immediately after divine service. Jaden Brown and Kamari Smith will be graduating from Cornwall College this Thursday. We wish them all the best in their future endeavors. Sister Nadine Brown is asking for prayer as her sister Rose Brown is going into surgery today. The Education Department and the entire church is extending congratulations to Brother Nevon Bernard, the former head boy of Harrison, who graduated on Sunday with honors. He also received a part scholarship towards furthering his education at NCU. Amen. Congratulations also to all the students who sat the PEP exams and were awarded a place at high school. Javon Cawley, Oliver Lewis Jr. and JT. Bottom Road of the Adventist Church invites you to their 5K Health Walk, which will be held on July 10, 2022. The cost will be $500, and the meetup time will be at 5.30 a.m. Refreshments will be on sale. A Fell Pathfinder at Adventure Club will be held today on the upstairs at 4 p.m. Happy anniversary to brother and sister Garth Anglin, who is celebrating five years of marriage today. Please pray for Lois, Lois Richards, her children and grandchildren. And the closing thought, God answers when you least expect it. Have a happy Sabbath.
Happy Sabbath, church. Are you happy to be in the house of God today? I am happy to be here. And may I invite all our visitors and all our members to sing as we lift our voices in praise to God. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed. That's going to be our first song today. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I come to know the weaknesses I see.
invite you to stand. He is here. Please stand, everyone. He is here. He is here. Oh, yes, he is here. He is here. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. The church is called to repair the hearts for the divine our worship. Let's sing the doxology. to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall God and our Father, King of the universe, we come before you as sheep called by their shepherd. We have answered the call to come away from our work, from our concerns and cares. We come before you now. We lay at your feet to receive from you. Bless our hearts and prepare us to receive your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Continuing in worship. Continuing in worship, we will sing What a Wonderful Savior, hymn 335. Oh, 
Jesus, my Jesus, what a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my to have you the host of the Lord virtually with us, but indeed we're all happy. It is my joy and my privilege to welcome each and every one, both those who are in-house and those who are online, to or prepare to meet the God evangelistic series with evangelist Michael Henry. We have been having a wonderful time out here. Let me see the hands of those who have been here throughout the week. Maybe not all the nights, but you came. And you can raise your virtual hand online because I know you've been worshiping with us. We have been having a wonderful time. The messages have been good. We have been blessed. And today I want to say to you, even before I grow any further, take a minute, be the evangel be the be the evangel the missionary for today and share that link. What other persons on your social media, on your Facebook, on your WhatsApp, everywhere, so they can join us. We have to come together in the house of the Lord. And for those of, let me, our visitors, may all our visitors please stand. Those of you who are visiting with us today, please stand. May our visitors please stand. Amen. Amen. I know we have more. Don't be shy. We're friendly people. May our visitors please stand. Do we have any more? Or oh, raise your hand for me. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Listen, please turn around and give them a nice Glendevon wave. We are so happy that you have come in the course of the Lord to worship with us today. And I want to say to you, visiting friends, because I know that a lot is happening around us. Many people are restless. Many people are hopeless. They are wondering what next. But we serve a God who wants to give us rest. And he says to you today, Come unto me, all, the, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Many times persons may wonder, how is it that we are Christians, and a lot is going on around us, and we may feel calm, we may feel peaceful, it's not like we're not concerned, but we have a God who we can rest in. We have a God who we know he will take care of our problems. So I often say, Lord, take the case, take the pillow and take the case and give me the pillow. Right. So I will rest and I will relax. And visitors, that same God is here for you today. Now for our regular members, I want to say to you, he says to Peter, on this rock I shall be my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So in the church, we may have times when it's rocking. We may have times when we go through storms. But I tell you, this church will go on. 
but because Jesus is our captain and one day we will reach the shore. So continue coming, stay in the church, keep pressing, and, and, and by the grace of God, we will make it. And we also have friends who are with us on More FM. I want to say welcome to you as well. Continue to listen and by God's grace, one day, all of us will meet together in the course above. Now we have a celebrant. Brother Carlton Brown, could you stand for me, please? Are you here today? Yes, Brother Brown celebrates his 80th birthday in the week. Eight zero. Right, so we want to say happy belated birthday to you, Brother Brown. He is a dedicated man of God and will continue to do what you'll do. You still look young and nice. Look at him at 80. You need to tell us the remedy. <laughs> So welcome again everyone and we'll now stand and sing our fellowship song. Glad you're here. As much as we can stand, if you can stand, please stand. I want to share my love with you. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you are here. I want to share my love with you. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you are here. I want to share my love with For we are one. For we are one. For we are one. For we are one. For we are one in the family of God. For we are one. Family of God. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you are here. I want to share my love with you. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you are here. I want to share my love. For we are one. For we are one. It is not our rank, nor birth, nor nationality, nor religious privilege which prove that we are members of the family of God. It is love, a love that embraces all humanity. This is a thought from the Children's Ministry Department. Music plays an important role in our worship today. It is no different. Our first message in song will be done by our, our youth choir by the Glendivan SDA Church. Show you next one. Lord, you are my light. Lord, you are my joy, you are my salvation, whom shall I fear? I don't have to worry, I won't be afraid, for in the time of trouble, he 
When he was just a teenager. And so he took care of his pair of sheep until he had 100 sheep in his flock. So each morning, Philip would get up 
early in the morning, he would have his breakfast, pack his lunch, pack his juice, pack his water, and he would go to where the sheep are, and he would open the gate, and he would let them out. Now, as the sheep goes through the gate, he would count one, two, three, four, five, until he reach 100. So he takes them in the field. He finds somewhere quiet. He allows the sheep to eat. And after they eat, he takes them by the water brook. And he let them have water to drink. And then he'll take them to a quiet area again where it's a lot of shade. And they will sit there and they will just rest. And just before going home, he would take them back to have some more water and they'll head right back home. And this happens what? Every day. Now, one day, after Philip was out in the field, he allowed them to eat, they ate, they drank water, they lay by the water brook, they lay in the shade, I should say, and it was time for him to return home. Now, after a busy day out in the field, taking care of his sheep, Philip was so hungry. And he was thinking, what is my wife cooking this morning, this evening for dinner? And he said, oh, it's two peas day. I'm going to have two peas this evening. So he, he rang the bell. Do you know what this means? It's time for us to go home. So all the sheep gathered together, and they lined up just behind Philip, and Philip led the way. On his way, he was whistling a song, and he went home. When he got home, as his custom was, he opened the gate, and he let the sheep went through. He counted one, two, three, four, five, until he reached what? 99. And Philip said, wow, a sheep is missing. And he said, maybe I'm miscounted. So he started again. One, two, three, four, five, 99 sheep. Philip was, what is this for me? I'm so hungry. I'm tired. I just want to rest. But there's one sheep behind. But let me count again. And he counted again. And what did he got? 99 sheep. And Philip said, Mrs. Philip, I'll be back. I'm hungry. Just keep the food warm. But a sheep is out there. I need to go find my sheep. And she said, okay, dear, be safe and come back quickly. And I hope you find your sheep. And he said, okay. And so he left. And he was, Bella, because he named all the sheep, you know. All the sheep had names. And he said, Bella was missing. And Bella, Bella. And then a far distant, he heard, Ba. He said, Bella, Ba. And he started walking in the direction he heard the sheep. And when he get closer, this little voice is a little louder, right? Ba, ba. And he said, oh, Bella, here you are. But when he looked, what happened to Bella? Her feet was broken. One of her limbs was broken. And so he took Bella up, and he put Bella on his shoulder, and he said, let's go home. And he started back home. And on his way home, he started singing a happy song. You know why he singing a happy song? Because his lost sheep was found. And so he was there singing, singing, singing. And when he got home, he said, Mrs. Phillips, I found my sheep. Mrs. Phillips, I found my sheep. Call the children. Call my neighbors. We need to celebrate. My sheep have been found. I found my sheep. I found my sheep. And so they were so happy. They started celebrating the lost sheep. He took the sheep in a little corner. Wash the feet down, he put a little plaster on and he wrapped it up and bandaged it and put the sheep in. And he said, oh, all my sheep are together now. I can rest tonight. They're all safe and sound. Because you know what is happening outside sometimes? The bears would come and attack, the wolves would come and attack, the dogs would come and attack. So you have to keep the sheep what? Safe. Now, boys and girls, the moral of the story is we are all God's children, right? We are the sheep. He's a good shepherd. We are his sheep. And if one of us go missing, what does Jesus do? He goes and search for each of us because he wants all of us to be safe, right? 
Yes, Jesus wants all of us to be safe, so we'll always seek until he finds that one sheep that is missing. Now, today we're going to have a turn to pray for us. And um, we want all the boys and girls to close their eyes as Aton pray for us. All right? Close your eyes, boys and girls. Let us pray. Dear righteous and heavenly Father, we give you thanks for waking us up this morning. Please protect us as we go through this Sabbath morning. As we go through our daily lives, we ask you to protect the poor who are on the road suffering. Help them to grow up so that they can become wealthy and help others. Dear Jesus, we ask you to protect us as we go through our lives. Protect everyone that we know and do not know. Protect our loved ones, our siblings, and our parents. Protect our friends and neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, boys and girls, and thank you, bigger boys and girls. Thank you so much, uh, and indeed we appreciate our boys and girls. And so at this time, we're going to be inviting uh, the parents with the little one to be dedicated to come forward as we present the little one to the Lord. And today we have a little Oriel Okira Huey uh, to be presented to the Lord. To invite the parents to come forward at this time. Matthew chapter 19, right after Jesus would have spoken about marriage and divorce, the Bible says little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them they did not think that Jesus had time for the children. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says that the little ones are of the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. Jesus recognized the significance of little ones being brought to the Father while they are young. In fact, he himself was brought uh, to the sanctuary by his mother when he was young. And there's practice coming all the way back, all the way back to Samuel, who was brought to the house of the Lord at a tender age. And the little ones are often presented to the Lord because we recognize that they do belong to God. It says, children of the kingdom of heaven. So this little child, thank you, this little child being brought to God's house this morning, Jesus says, is of the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? It means that her existence is a miracle of God. For while you would have participated in the process, yet it is God's act that created her. She is of the kingdom of heaven. And no matter how much we claim the little ones as our own, in reality, they are God's children. And so this child, 
mommy and daddy and members of the family. They're not yours. This child is not yours. This child is God's child. She was made for the kingdom of heaven. She was ordained by God for the kingdom of heaven. And you as a family have a responsibility to lead her to the place of the kingdom of God. You have a responsibility to teach her the will of God, to teach her the ways of God, so she can end up in the kingdom of God. And so parents, members of the family, as you stand here today to present little Miss, I hope I correctly pronounce it, it's Huey, to the Lord, I hope you understand and acknowledge your place in her life as guardians and guidance. You are supposed to lead this child in the way that she ought to go. You're supposed to teach her the things she needs to know. You're supposed to raise her the fear and admonition of the Lord's name. But be known that you cannot do that which you do not know. You can't teach her what you don't know. You can't lead her where you don't go. You can't help her along the path that you refuse to trod. And so if you're going to lead her after Christ, you must do what? Walk after Christ. If you're going to teach her the things of God, you must do what? Know the things of God. Huh? If you are going to allow her life to be a reflection of her creator, then you yourselves must be a reflection of the creator so that you can teach her and lead her in the right direction. At this time, Pastor Morris is going to be praying that very special prayer on behalf of the little one. I don't know if he has the child's touch, but um, <laughs> you gonna take her? <laughs> Loving Lord and our God, this morning we come to you because of this wonderful occasion little Huey loving Lord you have granted her to her parents indeed father you are the creator of her brain you are the creator of her body you are the creator of her bones and all the organs within her indeed you did place her in the womb of her mother. You protected her for nine months father. Anything could have happened during that process, but you have centered your holy angels around her to protect her in the womb. And after nine months father, you have willed her into solid reality. And so for this, we give you thanks. For this, we worship you, O God. And so her parents recognize that they can't do it unless Jesus is in the midst. They can't do it unless Jesus is the central focus, Father. And so they have brought her to you because they recognize, Father, that she's alone to them. And so they have given her back to you even now. So may you bless her, loving Lord. May you bless her faculties. May they develop, loving Lord, not just to understand things from a physical perspective, but may they develop to understand spiritual matters, loving Lord, that are very important to her soul salvation and her eternal interest. We pray, Father, that you will cover her under your blood. We pray, Father, that she will not experience any chronic illness or sickness or any defects, mighty God, any deformity, Father. But, Father, her body and her faculties will develop in accordance with your divine will, Father, to serve you, mighty God, to live that exemplary life of Jesus Christ. And even though they are dedicating her today, Father, we pray, loving Lord, when she would have arrived at that age, Father, to make that conscious decision to follow Jesus Christ, to follow her creator, her redeemer, the reconciler of her life, the one who has protected her and protecting her mighty God. 
May she then, Father, turn her life over to Jesus Christ, recognizing that the kingdom of heaven, ultimately, Father, belongs to her because you are directing her to the kingdom. May you bless her parents. May you bless her father. May you bless her mother-loving Lord. May you bless them with financial gift, mighty God. May you bless them with clothing and shelter, mighty God. May you bless them, loving Lord, with biblical theology, Father, so that they can impart, Father, to their child-loving Lord that which you want them to. And we pray, Father, that when you return in your glory, when you burst the eastern sky, Father, little Huey and her parents, loving Lord, and family overall, they would have served you so well that you will grant them that eternal access in your kingdom where they will live and reign with you throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Until then, may you protect them and may you overshadow them with your divine wings. For this is our prayer. This is our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Let God's children see. Amen. Amen and amen. May the hushers please come forward to take the day's tithes and offering. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty, the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Let us pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another Sabbath day. We thank you for bringing us here. Father, as we are about to collect what is rightfully yours, we ask you now to bless it and bless the ones who have given and the ones who have not, have not to give. And help us, Lord, that it may go further and of your cause. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>
Please be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Oh, I thought you wanted to stand up back. All right. Today, today we'll be introducing. Sorry. Today we'll be introducing a new feature. Today's feature is the first part series on music. And 100 is being conservative. So, we'll be looking at the healing properties of music, part one. Part one of about three. Today, we'll be looking at spiritual healing. Turn your Bibles quickly with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16. As we scan through the story, this is your homework for today. We have about five minutes, therefore, we won't be able to do a full presentation. So, you have homework. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, you will observe that uh, right after David gets anointed as king, the Bible tells that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, just immediately. Just The Spirit of God just almost shifted right from Saul and straight to David to anoint him as king. And so, as a consequence, an evil spirit came upon Saul, and he lost his temper. He was very bad. His servants around him recognized that he was ill-spirited and said to him, King, why not find a uh, uh, somebody who can play a harp, somebody who can play skillfully so that you don't have this bad, sour temper. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And Saul agrees. He recognizes that something is wrong with himself. And he says, okay, find me someone who can play a harp and let this evil spirit leave me alone. And Saul, he, he, uh, the servants went and they went to, to the tribe of Benjamin, of course, they went to find David and asked his father permission to send him to the palace. Uh, verse 27, you will see that David comes to the palace and he begins to play his harp for Saul. And what happens? Anybody? The evil spirit left him. The evil spirit left him. And this was not a miracle. All right? It's, although it is in the Bible, it is not recorded as a miracle. This is something that is scientific. This is something that is realistic to human nature. That our, the music that we listen to can impact our mood and our attitudes and our emotions. Of course, our emotions are the surface of our being. It's our personality. It's the top of our personality. So the first thing that impacts us is, is our emotions. We, we can be, depending on what we expose ourselves to or what reaches us as a challenge, we can react one way or the next. Question though, why the harp? What is it about a harp? Why, why the, there was a specific mention of let us find somebody that plays a harp. In those days, of course, there were many other instruments. There was the lute, there were the flutes, there were, there were other things. There were cymbals, there were trumpets. Why not bring a trumpet to blast the devil from the king? It probably doesn't work like that. So why the harp? If you listen to a harp, you'll hear a very flourishing, a kind of a flowery, kind of a flowing thing that is akin to sounds of nature. So if you listen to a harp, you'll hear something like a, a trickling of water or a cascading of a waterfall or, or you can think of maybe birds in flight, but it is associated with the soothing scenes and sounds of nature. So... It is telling us that there are, in the absence of music, we could probably resort to the scenes of nature, listen to some birds, listen to some, some um, whatever it is that makes sounds in nature, and you'd get a soothing effect from it. But of course, Saul was inside the palace, and there were no, no scenes of nature in there. There, were just, there was just work, work, things to do, kingly things to do. And so he was miserable. Um, we have... In our modern-day music, we have the harp that is featured generally inside an orchestra. Of course, an orchestra is that ensemble of musical instruments that includes other instruments that can also replicate nature. And this is basically the secret of why this kind of classical music, especially, is well-suited for, for soothing the emotions, all right? You wouldn't find, for instance, in a movie, that uh, a couple that was just finishing quarreling with each other and they are making up now and they are reconciling, you wouldn't necessarily find the blast of a trumpet, all right? And you wouldn't find uh, hip hop or, um, or calypso or something. You wouldn't necessarily find that. You'd find a very sweeping 
orchestration, love music. And I said, wow, your heart melt just by watching that. And so we find that these are the, the classical genre of music is the one most compatible with the emotional transactions that are present in the gospel. So at the point where someone is just converted and they are experiencing remorse for sin and re experiencing the feeling of repentance and wanting to commit to God, it is mostly entirely an emotional experience. And this is where music comes in. This is why we have songs of appeal, songs of meditation, and these songs have to be our proper, they are better applied when they are properly selected along a genre that has emotional content. All right? That's all for today. See you next time. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Um, our scripture reading is taken from Leviticus 16, and we're reading from chapter 7, verse um, 7 to 9. And I'm asking the church to please stand. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon the upon which the Lord Lot fell and after him for a sin offering. This is a portion of God's holy word. as we pray to the Lord of heaven. Great Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider. Jehovah Shalom, who is our peace. We come to you this day, for we are all soldiers, in the army, but we do not know all the instructions that we should have followed. So we come to you, Father, seeking more. Help us, O oh Lord, that we may give listening ears as you, as you instruct us how to go out and how to come in. Be with your people, O oh Lord, we ask, as we assembled ourselves at this time seeking more and still more of you. We thank you, Lord, for life. We thank you, Lord, for all the provision that you had made for your children. And more so, Lord, help us to be like you, Jesus Christ. Hear us this morning and bless your people. Help us as we wait upon your second coming. We may prepare our hearts through your words. Continue to bless and keep and guide. We thank you for your manservants, which has been here with us from last week's Sabbath until this time. We would see him as modern Elijah, fierce and bold. Care not, care not what may say, he stood up for you, 
He has been using him in various places and various time. And so, Lord, we are asking you, as you wait in congregation, and even those who wait online, waiting to hear more and more and still more of you, oh, Lord, we are asking you that you may use him as you had never done before. Climb down, oh God, in, him, in, your, in his heart and allow the Holy Spirit to awaken the, the congregation to righteousness. These we ask now through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, now and forevermore. Amen. My task today is to introduce the speaker. Who is he? You might ask. He has been introduced a number of times before. Personally, I don't know much about him, but I understand that he is the first elder of the Chester Castle SDA Church. You would have heard him being introduced a number of times before, so I will not go down the, that road. I see him as a very charismatic person, a man who is on fire for God, a man who delights in preaching the word. But one of the little things that the congregation or those online might not have noticed is that he's a little shy. If you were listening last Sabbath, this is his second Sabbath here preaching, and he's, he's on fire. He's really on fire. He has been preaching some poor-packed sermons with the main focus on the sanctuary, its furnishings, and the meaning of the furnitures. Let us continue to lift him up in prayer. Because he's a young man. And in times like these, young men tend to stray away from the word. Just lift him up in prayer. Now his name is Michael Henry. And after the choir, the youth choir, the next voice you will hear is the voice of Michael Henry. Why? 
We're singing this afternoon. Let's crown him with the many crowns. Sing, everybody. He reigns victorious. Sing. He is high and lifted up. You ought to know that. He's Jesus, Son of God. Sing with us. He is the treasure of heaven. Even though he was crucified, worthy is the Lamb. We sing worthy again. Oh, yes, we sing worthy. And the church say amen down there. We lift our hands and praise the Lord, somebody. We lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want you to know, I want you to know that uh, to say, I keep saying it everywhere, everywhere I go. Hear me. To say amen, to say praise the Lord, to say hallelujah, to say thank you, Jesus, you're not being irreverent. You are not breaking the Sabbath. You're not apostatizing. Are you hearing me? Uh, it is fine to say amen. It is fine to lift your hands and praise the Lord. It is fine to say hallelujah. It is fine to say thank you Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just want to say that. <laughs> Let me say good afternoon everybody. Let me also say, before I go any further, <laughs> good afternoon to those who are listening to us today on More FM. Yes, we're live again on More FM 91.7. Did I get it right? Yes, I got it right. And there are folks listening from Norwood and uh, Glen Devon here and Sun Valley. And we want to say welcome to those who are on More FM. Amen, church. Give them a big amen. Let them hear you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we also have folks who are on YouTube and Facebook who are not in the building this afternoon, but in their homes and they're worshiping with us. I remember this name, Panthon, Barbara. I, every night when I watch uh, the, bro, the, the program, when I get home, I, I see Miss Barbara typing in and encouraging the preacher. Thank you, thank you, and Miss Donna Morris and Pernell Reed. Those are some folks we have online today. Yes, I, I don't know, Malin, but I just feel like picking up some people. All right, I'm gonna put this in file 13. Yes, yes, all right, in the Bible. All right, all right. <laughs> Let me welcome my, do you remember her name? Who gave those words of introduction? I didn't know she noticed that I was a shy person. I am shy. I only have mouth when I'm up here behind the cross. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. We're pressed for time. We're going to be having baptism today. Come on, say amen, somebody. Uh, two precious souls, two precious souls are going to be giving their lives to Jesus. Come on, say amen down here. Amen. To God be the glory. And while we are going to be having baptism here, a special lady who was a part of the program I did in Chester Castle, will be getting baptized today over there as well. Her Auntie Norma. I wanted to be there for her, but I can't. So I told her I'm going to big her up, and I want her to take pictures and video clippings for me. She's a special lady. Can I tell you, every night over there, she was there as a visitor. And she called me yesterday, Ella Dacri, and said to me, the last three sermons that I preached, she got the conviction. But she didn't want to do it and don't have her family there to support her. 
So I'm rejoicing with her this afternoon, all right? All right. For those who are online on YouTube, we have our decision link right there. You can use your phone and you can scan the QR code and you can fill in the necessary information that you see there indicating your decision for Jesus Christ. Amen, church? You can, you have some things there. Number one, you would like to accept the Bible as your rule of faith and practice and desire and to be obedient to Jesus. You can take that one if you want to be baptized. It is there for you as well. You might be a Christian, but you feel like you need a rebirth. You can make use of that decision as well. Amen, church? Amen. And if you want to have a closer walk with Jesus or a visit from the pastor, you can also take those. Make that decision for Jesus because time is running out. Are you hearing me down there? Time is running out. Time is running out. And just as our time is running away spiritually, it is also running away physically. So stand everybody. <laughs> I'm being my, oh, they are my candidates. A young man and an old man, an elderly man. Give them a big amen, church. Amen. I didn't see them. Stand everybody. Stand once you can stand. You have your two feet. Stand up. Let the blood flow down to your toes as you repair our hearts and our minds of the word of God. Hold your Bibles high. Let's go now. Hold your Bibles high. Repeat after me now. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. Satan doesn't want me to read and believe this Bible. But I am going to read and believe this Bible. For it is the word of God. Let's fan the word to oh, this afternoon again in the devil's face. <laughs> We keep standing. We sing now to prepare our minds and our hearts. Spirit of the living God, we ask him to fall afresh on us today. Sing with us down there. Oh yes. That's what we need this afternoon. Holy Spirit's anointed. The living God. Oh, we're asking today. Oh, sing, beloved. We want him to break us this afternoon. Melt me, mold me, and fill me Spirit of the Living God. Fall afresh today. heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Christ has for sin atonement made. What a wonderful Savior. We are redeemed. The price has been paid. What a wonderful Savior. Today, gracious Lord, we come on this holy sabbath in this holy convocation to worship you to hear a word directly from the throne of glory if we don't hear from you today what will we do so today like samuel we say father Speak, my Lord, your servant want to hear ya. Consecrate this piece of clay called Michael Henry.
cleanse me of all impurities. Give me a fresh anointing of your Holy Ghost power upon washing me in the precious cleansing agent, the blood of Jesus Christ. Hide me in that cross today so I will not be seen or heard. Condescend again down here. Move among the pews. Move among the visitors. Move online in a mark way. Hold the devil in check today, Jesus. So this word that you have for us will not be impeded or no one will be distracted or disturbed. But may our hearts be receptive so it can find lodgment there. And oh Father, help us to be careful today when we would have concluded to give no one the praise, the glory, or the honor but Jesus Christ alone, for he is worthy. In his name we pray and God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you everybody. You may be seated down there. You may be seated. I should have also told you that we'll be right here this afternoon again. Amen, church? To start our second week. And this week promises to be even more exciting and interesting as we continue our walk in the word of Almighty God. House cleaning. House cleaning. There are some special times when individuals, we decide to do a proper cleaning of our homes. Not saying that we don't clean our homes, but for argument's sake, even though we are not to celebrate Christmas as a Seventh-day Adventist. You didn't hear me. <laughs> Because we know where that day comes from. But we like to, at the end of the year, uh, do what is called, not, no, it's not spring cleaning, Ella Dockery. What's like to do? Spring cleaning? Okay, yeah. We, we like to change our furniture, our drapes, and uh, some nice spread that you may have bought and put on the bed once. And when you put it on, nobody dare even walk near the bed. And we clean some places that normally would not get clean. But I want you to know today uh, that there is a house or a temple that is being cleansed right now. And each and every single one of us in church has a role to play. Hear me, let me go, let's go. During the sanctuary service, as we were looking at last week, uh, there were many services that were held in the uh, earthly sanctuary system. But there was one particular service that was held only once per year. And this was done as uh, to cleanse as it were the sanctuary of the sins that were transferred to the sanctuary and to thus remove it completely from the people and from the sanctuary this service was called the day of atonement it was a service beloved where the high priest would officiate in the service. Also in the service, there were two goats that were provided. One that a lot would be cast, where you could say head or tail. And if you say head, for this one on the right, which is a large goat, and tails for whichever one, whichever one the lot fell on, that goat would be called the large goat. Or the scapegoat. Stay with the preacher. 
and the Lord's coat would be killed and the blood taken into the sanctuary. While the scapegoat would be out there waiting until the service is over. Stay with the preacher. Uh, this service occurred on the 10th day of the 7th month. That's why I told you Ju July is the best month. Because it's a seventh month. You ought to say amen down there. Stop trying to fight it. <laughs> this service, beloved, was regarded as more sacred than any other day in the yearly round of service. It was a ceremonial Sabbath, a day of fasting and prayer. You ought to know that the Israelite who did not afflict his soul upon that day was cut off from among the people. So sacred, ladies and gentlemen, was this day that even today, although the Jews as a nation have rejected Jesus Christ, few of them have any regard for the Sabbath. But on this day, the 10th of this month, which is tomorrow, are you still with me? The Jews would cease to conduct any business. Are you hearing me down there? No matter how wicked they are, they would close their stores and they would hold this day in high esteem. Leviticus 23 verse 27. Let's go to the word quickly. I have a many texts for you, but I'm just going to give you some, read some for you, and let you write down some for yourself. Leviticus 23 verse 27, the Bible said, Also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Somebody ought to know that there were several sacrifices offered upon the day of atonement and the high priest also had to offer a sacrifice for himself and his family. He had to offer a bullock to cleanse himself, himself because you want to know somebody that this service, the high priest was not just going into the holy place, but the high priest was going into the most holy place before God himself. And no sinful human beings can step into the presence of God with sin in their lives and remain alive. So the priest had to cleanse himself and make sure that his sins are forgiven to stand before God for his people. And there's something you ought to know as well. Uh, that the service was so serious, Elder Dockery, that when the priest puts on his priestly garment uh, that he wore only once per year, this particular garment, uh, at the end of it, uh, God had instructed them that bells of pomegranates uh, were to be sewn at the hem of the garment. So when he entered the most holy place uh, and was officiating, walking around uh, the people would hear the bells ringing and would know that the high priest is still alive. Somebody ought to know tonight that up in glory there's a high priest walking around doing work to clean the sanctuary and we can hear the bells ringing. What are the bells preacher? The signs of the time. Hear me. Read the entire chapter of Leviticus chapter 16. When you go home, you will find the sermon in there. The high priest killed the Lord's goat. Who did it? 
the high priest killed the Lord's coat and then clad in his gorgeous robes with the breastplate of judgment bearing the names of the twelve tribes of Israel over his heart and the sacred onyx stones with the names of the tribes on his shoulders. He passed with the blood of the goat into the most holy place. Somebody ought to hear me today just as he entered within the second veil carrying the golden censer filled with coals of fire from the altar before the Lord his hand full of incense the priests would place the incense upon the coals in the censer that the cloud of fragrant incense might cover him as he passed in before the visible presence of God as manifested between the cherubim above the mercy seat. Somebody ought to know today when it comes on to standing up for Jesus. You can't be boastful. You can't be too full of self because if you are, you can't stand before God. God. So preachers must be humble people. Pastors too. And you ought to know when you get up here, when you get up here, it's never about you. When you get up here, it's not what you were taught. I didn't see you. you. didn't get the preacher. When you get up here, it's not how much you can articulate or how you can use the English language. When you get up here, it's all about Jesus. Hear me somebody. Hear me today. Hear me. Hear me, you want to know that with his fingers, he sprinkled the blood upon the mercy seat. You remember I talked about the mercy seat last week? Upon the blood, he sprinkled the blood upon the mercy seat, which was above the broken law of God. Then going out into the first apartment, he touched the horns of the golden altar with the blood. And somebody, hear me today, when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation, he went out into the court again. That's why ladies and gentlemen, I want somebody to understand today that we don't have long down here. Am I talking to my church? I want somebody to understand today that we have but a short time. I want somebody to understand today that the days of playing church is long gone. You didn't get the preacher. The days of being in the river on the bank is over. The days of scratching around with your Christianity is over. It's either you are in it or you're outside of it. But don't waste your time in it and you don't really want to be a part of it. Can I tell you, don't waste your time, Elder Dockery, coming to church and you know you have no intention to get to heaven. Are you hearing me down there? It is better you live your life and you know when Jesus comes, you're on your way to hell than living in church and not being certain where you're going. If you're here, at this moment in time, your mind must be so made up that you will say death before dishonor. When he had done that in type, what the high priest was doing at the doctor was bearing in himself all the sins of the children of Israel. 
which they had confessed and transferred to the sanctuary. Stay with the preacher. When he had done that, he would lay his hands upon the head of the scapegoat. Are you still with me down here? And confess over the scapegoat all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins putting them upon the head of the goat. And the goat would then be sent away by the hand of a fit man or a strong man. Are you still with me? Into the wilderness. The scapegoat bore upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited. A land of separation. You want to say amen? You know, I could, I could, I could wrap the sermon up right here. Because ladies and gentlemen, a day is coming. You want to know? A day is coming when sin will finally be totally be separated from this world. You want to know that God has no interest to destroy any one of us. You online, God has no interest to destroy you. But you see, if you hold on to sin, and you don't want to let go of sin, after God makes the provision to free you from sin, then God can do nothing else than to destroy you with the sin you love. Then after that, he would go back into the tabernacle of the congregation and the high priest would lay aside his priestly garment and put on his other garment. Then he would come again into the court. He would cleanse the court from its defilement of sin and the bodies of the animals whose blood had been taken within the sanctuary were carried outside of the camp and burnt. And when the sun set, ladies and gentlemen, on the day of atonement, hear me somebody, when the sun sets on the day of atonement, the sins of the people were all all gone into the land of separation and nothing but ashes remained as a reminder of their sins. A day like that is coming soon. Stay with me. I'm heading there. You can, as I said, read Leviticus 16. It's all of what I'm saying is right there. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, thus was carried on the type of that heavenly work. Where am I now? Heavenly, heavenly work. What was done in the earthly sanctuary was a, a symbolic, of, of symbolic nature of the work that is being done today in the heavenly sanctuary. Are you still with me down there? Thus the work of the type of the heavenly work which is to decide, hear me somebody, which is to decide the earthly destiny of Every soul that has ever lived upon the earth. Did you hear me down there? So Adam's destiny is being looked at today. You didn't get me on a church. You're silent on me. Every soul that ever lived on the earth. In the courts above, their destiny is being decided. Stay with me. Hear me. It was therefore necessary that the earth of sanctuary should be cleansed with the blood of rams and bullocks and goats. But hear what Paul said in Hebrews 9 and verse 23. Let's go. Hebrews 9 and verse 23. Hear what Paul said about the heavenly sanctuary. Paul said it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be what? 
purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with what now, church? With better sacrifices than these. You ought to know that the blood of an earthly lamb, an earthly bullock, an earthly goat could not transcend to glory and cleanse the heavenly sanctuary. The heavenly sanctuary, which the earthly was a replica of, can only be cleansed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You ought to say amen down there. But why does a sanctuary need cleansing? Because uh, the blood, as in the earthly, that was used to touch the horns on the altar, was only covering the sins of the people. Showing that the blood had been spilled and the sinner is placed in his fate in the innocent blood of the lamb. But the, the sins were still there in the sanctuary, not cleansed. So it needed a day to do a cleansing. Hear me somebody, when we confess our sins today, Jesus offers his blood and Pardon is written beside your name and my name. But our sins are still in glory. And we can't get there in a messy sanctuary. So Jesus has to do a work of cleansing. Come on, say amen down there. Uh, hear me, hear me, hear me. Jeremiah 2.22 I want you to understand today that everything is marked before God. Did you hear me down here? Are you hearing me online? Every sin is marked before God in heaven. Jeremiah 2 and verse 22. What does the word say, preacher man? Let me read it for you today. Jeremiah 2 and verse 22. What does the word say, preacher? I'm getting there. Turn in your Bibles as well until it might pop up on the screen before you. Jeremiah 2 and verse 22. Hear the word of God today. The Bible said here, here it goes now. The Bible said, for though thou wash thyself with lee and use much soap, God said, your iniquity is marked before me, says the Lord. So God says, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter how you clean yourself or how righteous you think you are. Your sins are still here before me. Hear me. When sins are confessed and forgiven, I just told you, they are covered. They are what, church? Talk to me down there. No sleeping. They are what? Covered. This was typified by their being transferred to the sanctuary. Oh, this is the part I love now. And as they were transferred to the sanctuary, Ladakri, no human eyes. You ought to say amen down here. Come on, church, say amen. I'll tell you why I'm saying for you to say amen. When the sins were transferred to the sanctuary, it was only the high priest that was there. No human eyes could ever behold the stains of the blood of the sin offering upon the horns of the golden altar before the veil. You don't want to say amen. Well, let me tell you why you ought to say amen. Because somebody ought to know today, if you know my past, if you know my past, you would not have me here preaching to you. You didn't get the preacher. <laughs> if many people know about your past in the building, you would never be a member of this church. You didn't get the preacher. You would never sing on the praise team. But thank God for Jesus. When you confess your sins, it is only Jesus that knows about it. That's why I can say, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. That's why, when you, that's why, let me trouble you. That's why when you come to church, 
you must come with a praise. You must come with a hallelujah. You must come with a thanksgiving. Because you know what you did this week. You know the words you spoke yesterday. You know the thoughts you have in church this moment. And if I knew, and if pastor knew, you would have to go into the water grave of baptism. But thank God for Jesus. Only Jesus knows. That's what the song said. I must tell Jesus. I can't bear his burdens alone. Jesus alone can help me. Hallelujah. Jesus alone. What I can, what I can tell Jesus, I can't tell my wife. Can I be, be frank? You husbands down here, and you wives, if you think I'm lying, you go home and tell your wife how many flirts you had. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. You go home and tell her, honey. You know, I have this girl that I'm flirting with, you know, and she's really nice. And see if your head is not busted open. And pastor don't have the right to come to you and ask her not to divorce you. Yeah, but you can tell Jesus. You didn't get me. You can tell Jesus. You can tell Jesus the curse words in your mouth. You can tell Jesus, you know, Lord, I don't really like the preacher, you know, because him says some things that really hurt me. But help me to accept your truth and then get the preacher. You can tell Jesus everything and your secret is safe with him. The earthly sanctuary was cleansed. On the tenth day of the seventh month once a year. So too, Pastor Dyer. Uh, somebody ought to know that the heavenly sanctuary will be cleansed once and for all. Come on and say amen down there. And all, ladies and gentlemen, and can I inform you quickly. This work of cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary began in 1844 A.D. According to the 2,300 days prophecy of Daniel. You didn't get the preacher. So if that day, if beginning the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary began in AD 1844, then ladies and gentlemen, you ought to know that any day now, Jesus will declare, it is finished. Hear me, hear me. No mirror can ever portray the features of the face as accurately as the books of heaven have portrayed the life record of each individual. You can't tell God it's not you. You can't tell God you did not do it. As a matter of fact, God don't need a book to record things because he doesn't trouble with amnesia. He does not have Alzheimer's. He has no aging problem. But because God wants the world just to see how fair he is, he keeps a book of record for you and I. So when Michael Henry does not make it, if I don't, God forbid, you will know what happened, why I did not make it. And even Michael Henry, when I don't make it, will have to declare like what you said, Ella, 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 Doc, just and true are thy ways, king of saints, and take my punishment. Hear me now. God's throne is a movable structure. Don't look at me weird. I'm going to tell you why I say that. As in the type 
His visible presence was manifested in the outer apartment of the earthly sanctuary. So in heaven, the throne of God was in the first apartment when Christ ascended and sat at the right hand of God the Father. Are you still with me down here? Why? Because type had met anti-type. The high priest in the heavenly sanctuary entered the most holy place and as in the type, God promised to meet with him there in the most holy. So the father passed into the holy of holies before the high priest and was there when the angels brought my Jesus triumphantly to stand before him. That's why Daniel said in Daniel 7 verse 9 and 10 he said I saw thrones were cast down. You ought to know that the Bible was written in oriental languages. So when it said cast down it means literally moving from one place to the other. So Daniel said he saw one like the ancient of days. He took his seat the judgment was set the books were opened and then Daniel said he saw one like the son of man being brought unto him with the clouds of glory and angels times ten thousands of angels they ministered unto him what was happening here Jesus was taking up his position as our high priest after defeating Satan on Mount Calvary, after reigning victorious, when the angels brought him, the cry went to glory. Open ye gates, lift up your heads, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, he is the King of glory. Lift up your heads, O we gates, and be lifted up. The everlasting doors. Let the King of Glory come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. He is the King of Glory. Hallelujah today. Glory to God. We have an high priest. His king of glory. When the high priest uh, put on his priestly garment, he had breastplates of righteousness that bore the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. You can see on the screen? Good. If you can't see it, that's all right. Six on one side. And six on the other side. You ought to know that every single one of us are from one of the tribes of Judah. Because every single one of us have some characteristic traits of one of the sons of Jacob. Am I talking it on here? So the high priest bore the names of the children of Israel. But I want you to understand that ladies and gentlemen, he bore not just the names, but he also bore the sins of the people. Are you with me down here? And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, he had to ensure that his life was right with God. But if you, want to, if you draw the conclusion that a earthly priest might have forgotten you, like sometimes Pastor Dyer might not remember every name of the members in his congregation. Because there are many down here. Am I talking the truth? Uh, and you're here. It's hard to remember everybody. He's human. Uh, but there's somebody who's divine. 
Come on and say amen down here, church. And you ought to know that no matter what you're going through, he knows about it. You didn't hear the preacher. No matter what you've been through, he knows about it. No matter how many people are going through the same thing, he knows about your case differently from mine. You didn't hear the preacher. And that's why he said to remind somebody online a backslider in Isaiah 49 and verse 15. Hear Jesus saying to somebody giving you hope this afternoon in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 and 16 the Bible said can a woman can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb yea God said they may forget yet I will not never ever forget you you, your mother might forget you. Your father might forget you. But David said, when your mother and your father forsake you, the Lord going to take you in. Because the Lord will not forget you. I'm so glad today that I'm always remembered by God. Why? Why will he never forget you? He said, see, I have inscribed or engraved your names in the palm of my hands. You ought to say amen down there. Thy walls are continually before me. Let me finish with you today. I know time is running. But I must finish with you. The earthly priest presented the blood to atone for the sins of the people. But our high priest, your heavenly high priest, backslide online, your heavenly high priest, saints of God, your heavenly high priest, sinner man, he does not present the blood of a cow, but he presents his own blood. That's why when Martha was about to touch him, he said, touch me not Mary. I've not yet presented my blood. He said today, Father, my blood for a backslider. My blood for a sinner. My blood for a drunkard and liar, my blood for a gunman, my blood for a rebellious son, my blood for a wayward daughter, my blood. The high priest in the earthly would present the fragrance of the incense that was made before God, but our heavenly high priest presents the robe. Of his sweet righteousness. Come on and say amen down there. Hear me somebody. Which he imputes. To every one. Who sins. Are all confessed. And covered with his blood. When your name. Come up in review. Before God. So if my name is called. And there are unconfessed sins. In my life. No matter how I jump. And stamp. And preach down here. Jesus will not be able to say. My blood. You didn't get me. No matter how long you are in church. If you have unconfessed sins. That you have not sent on to glory. Before your high priest, to your lawyer, so he can handle your case when your name is called, he can't say, my blood. And if he can't say, my blood, there is no righteousness. And you will be cut off. But if you tell him everything, tell him everything. Tell him everything. We confess and forsake. When your name comes up, 
he will not excuse your sins. Did you get me? He will not make an excuse for your sins. But all he will say, Father, my blood. He or she has told me everything. The nails card in my hands is the signature of the price I have paid. Come on, say amen down here. While Jesus today plead our case. While Jesus is our high priest, eh? plead our case. There is hope for every repentant sinner online in the building. There is hope for you, my brother. There is hope for you, my sister. Backslider, there is hope. Sinner, there is hope for you. But when Jesus at last on that day makes the last act of intercession, Mercy's door that is wide open today gonna slam shut on the inches of grace. And there will be no intercessor. No more mercy. No more forgiveness. No more pleading. It is over. It is over. It is over. Let me finish with you. Give me a few more minutes time, people. Let me, I need to finish this message the way it must be finished. Hear me, somebody. And just as our when the high priest, El Adakri, leaves the most holy, tarries a while in the holy to still give somebody a chance. When he leaves the holy and he gets back in the courtyard, he's going to rest his hands on the scapegoat. And he's going to confess the sins of the people on the scapegoat. Thus transferring the sins from the sanctuary to the goat. When Jesus, hey, hey, hear me now, hear me now, hear me now. When Jesus finishes his work of reconciliation, something going to take place. You see, the term scapegoat has become synonymous with an evil one. Uh, the Aziel, as the Hebrew word says, is a proper name and is understood to represent the devil. The who? The devil. You ought to say amen down there. So when our high priest has finished his work in the heavenly sanctuary, he, Jesus, will place all the sins, hey, all the sins of Michael Henry, all the sins of Elder Dockery, all the sins of you down there, all the sins of you online, Jesus going to place our sins as long as we confess them and he covers them and he forgives us. He's going to place them on the head of Satan. Because Satan is the instigator of sin. The devil is why God is not here with us in person. Satan is the reason why you suffer. You didn't get the preacher. Satan is the reason why you feel pain. You didn't get me. Satan and sin is the reason why people go out of their minds. Is the why we have murderers. But one day, very early, payday is coming. Psalm 7 verse 16. Let's go quickly. Uh, let's beg for a few more minutes. I'm at the finishing line now. Psalm 7 and verse 16. Hear what David said. I'm speaking about the devil. David said in Psalm chapter 7 verse 16. His mischief shall do what? Shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealing shall come down upon him. Upon his own head. Pale. You don't hear the preacher. So Satan, I'm so glad, you know, I won't have to carry my sin no more. I don't have to feel depressed no more. I won't have to feel frustrated no more. I won't have to struggle with evil people no more. And bad tendencies and evil practices. Because one day, very early, Satan going to bear what he deserves. And just as our scapegoat was taken into a land desolate, where no one lives. Satan going to find himself in a similar position. Because when Jesus comes back and the saints are taken from the earth. 
The Bible said we're going to spend a thousand years with Jesus. And the earth is going to be left uninhabited. So the devil will be in a land which is called the chains of the bottomless pit. It's a chain of circumstances. He won't have Elder Henry to tempt no more. You don't get me? He won't have you to tempt no more. He won't have you to push to the limit no more. He won't have you to deal with gunmen no more. You didn't hear me. Come on, church. Say amen down here. Don't look at me like that. You ought to be rejoicing. You ought to be rejoicing because better days are coming. You ought to be rejoicing because sin and sinners will be no more. The entire universe is going to be clean. One pulse of harmony is going to beat through the vast creation from him who created all. going to flow life forever. Better days are coming. And it's not just to go and drink milk and honey. But better days are coming when we're going to be free from Satan's tyranny. Free from Satan's mischief. Free at last. I want to finish. But let me finish with these two texts. I know time is gone. But I must finish. You see, when Jesus gets here, just as how the high priest took off, Pastor, bring me a little something to come. Just as how the high priest, come here, doctor, help me, help me, help me. Just as how the high priest is going to take off his priestly garment. going to take off his messy garment, eh? his, his, his work clothes. Because his work is done. Uh, today, he's our high priest. He's interceding on your behalf. He's ministering, pleading his blood. But one day, when the last sinner repents, when the last sin is confessed, when the last prayer is prayed, when the last sermon is preached, when the last baptism is had, when the last act of intercession is done, Jesus will declare, as he did in Revelation, it is finished. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. When the high priest declares it is finished whatever your condition that's what you're gonna remain in come here doctor this is not really cut it still but come come up here so 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 fast 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 you see fast fast he's gonna put on don't watch his size he's gonna put on i hope it can go on Praise the Lord. Where's the handle? It's tight. That's how God fits you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tight, 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 tight. Tight, eh, tight up. Hallelujah. Come on, say amen down there. Come on, say amen down there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you, sir. You see, you see, that's good. You see, that's how God's grace is. You don't get me. You see, even if you're large, God's grace can fit you. You don't get the preacher. Even if you're big and fat and sin has swollen you up, his righteousness can still cover you. He has a cut to fit for everybody. You don't get me. So when he takes off the priestly garment, put on his kingly robe, put on his kingly crown, pick up his robe. Royal scepter, the sky gonna burst asunder, the clouds gonna roll back on the scroll, the heavens gonna be lighted with the glory of God down the flaming sky. Jesus will come, and all God's children will look up to the sky and declare, This is my God. I have waited for him. That's why today he's cleansing the sanctuary. There is hope for you today. There's hope, backslider. There's hope, backsliding, sir. There's hope online. There's hope, my friend, in the building. 
you can come today while Jesus is still in his priestly garment. You can come today while he's still mediating. You can come today while he's still interceding. Because Malachi 4 verse 1 to 3 said, God's going to come and the day of the Lord going to burn as an oven. Just as how the animals after they were slain were killed and the ashes remain somebody I don't know today that the ashes of the wicked are gonna be the carpet for the saints of God you don't hear me down here somebody I don't know that Nahum 9 and verse 1 said 1 verse 9 said iniquity shall never 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 ever rise its ugly head again hallelujah glory to God no more sin no more sacrifice no more offering no more crusade no more preaching no more pastor's office no more conference session no more it's over it's over it's over the price has been paid the work is finished it's over But before that, my last text, Pastor is ready. Zachariah, put it up. The last text. God is a merciful God. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. The Lord hath been sore, displeased with your fathers. God is upset today. Next verse. Therefore, Michael Henry, when you get to Glen Devon on the 9th of July, 20, 22, at 10 minutes after one, tell them, therefore, say unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn you to me, come to me, say the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Seek the Lord. While he may be found in the sanctuary, call upon him while he's near to you today. I want to pray for somebody. Come, praise team. Come, sing. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul because of Jesus. It is well. It can be well with your soul today. The cleansing of the sun to in heaven is taking place now. Time would not permit me to go into all the details. That's why we have Bible class. This is the question on the screen. Will you be there? Will I be there when the roll is called up yonder? Will my name be found written there? I want to pray for somebody today. You can utilize the decision link this moment online. You can make use of the code. You can scan it. You can click on the link down there. You can send in your information. We have persons who will get in touch with you. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. This world is poised for destruction. Satan is going to be punished one day. You don't want to be punished with Satan. Because you can't withstand the wrath of God. So the day you're here. Two appeals quickly I make. You're here today. You're in this building. And you have not yet said yes to Jesus. You have not made him your personal companion and guide. But you have heard a joyful sound that Jesus said. And you want to say it is well. 
I ask you to raise your hands where you are. Not yet said yes to Jesus. You're a visitor here today. And you want us to pray for you. Raise your hands where you are. God sees those hands. One, two, three, four. God sees those hands today. He sees those hands. And the angel has taken note of those hands. He wants you to sing it as well. But he knows you can't sing it the way you are. So he wants to do a work on your heart. He wants to apply his blood to your life and put on his robe of righteousness on you. Stand everybody. Stand everybody. We're through today. Thank you for allowing the Holy Ghost to work for the few extra minutes you gave. I'm going to ask those of you now who raised your hands. Jesus made a walk for you. Jesus came down here for you. He left the splendor of glory. He suffered shame and humiliation for you down there. So you have raised your hands. I'm going to ask you now. Just leave your seats. And come on down to the altar. Come on down to the altar. All those of my friends, God's children. You want to sing it as well. Come on down my sister. Come on down my brother. Those who raised your hands. Make a walk for Jesus today. He's interceding this moment. Your, your, your names have been engraved in the palm of his hands. He wants to fix it for you. It is well. It is well. Yes, mother. Thank you. I stand right there. There's one more down there. You raise your hands. Just walk to the altar. Because you want it to be well. You want when Jesus said it is finished. Your names would have remained in the Lamb's book of life. And your sins blotted out. I have a card in my hand. Oh, we have cards. We're just going to ask you to take a card. It's a decision card. We want you to make a decision for Jesus. That's why we are here. Yes, we want people to give their hearts to Jesus. We want you to be ready for the opening of the eastern sky. Yes, we want you to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes. We want you to say this well. You're down there. You're a backslider. You're a backslider. You may not have left the church. But you're a backslider in the church. You want to come on down to the altar. So it can be well with your soul. You want to return to your maker. I'm asking you today, a backslider. You have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. If you're down here today, God bless you, she's coming. If you're down here today, a backslider. You want to be here to be ready to meet Jesus. You're not too far for him to reach you. You're not too messed up for him to still love you. There is still room at the cross. Come on down to the altar. Backslider. Making this appeal today. Then I'm through. Then pastor's going to pray for us today. You're a backslider down there. You know a backslider. You know the person has not yet surrendered. You know they used to be in church. But they are no longer in church. Just hold their hand gently. Hold their hand gently. In love. And walk with them to the altar. Because as it was in the earthly sanctuary. When the day of atonement is over. Anyone with unconfessed sins. Going to be cut off from the camp of Israel. When Jesus finishes his work. Anyone with unconfessed sins. Going to find themselves in hellfire. God bless you elder. Walk with them. Walk with them. Bear it no more. There's one more. Yes, sir. You are behind that lady. 
Yes, sir, don't look behind you. I believe you are one of them. Is there one more? Is there one more? One more backslider. A mother with a child. A mother with a child was not yet said yes to Jesus. Children are going to be lost on the day of judgment. But you can make your child be ready to meet Jesus. You can make your child be ready for the coming of the Lord by giving them to Jesus. Is there one more? You want to say? It is well. They're coming, Pastor. They're coming. All over, they're coming. Sing the last verse for me, my friends. All over, they're coming. For God bless you, my sister. Sing, all over, they're coming. Mercy's door is still open. Mercy is still calling your name down there. Calling your name online. Calling your name, backslider. Online, calling your name. Mercy is still calling. This is cold. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray today. Shall we say? Is there one more for Jesus? There's a young man down there still. There's a young lady down there. There's someone on more FM. Somebody on more FM on YouTube. Sign up today. Let it be well with your soul. They're coming, Pastor. The Holy Ghost is working down here. The Holy Ghost is working. Because danger is ahead. Oh, you can leave here saying, It is well. They're coming. They're coming, church. They're coming. They want to be clothed today. They're coming. Is there one more? It is well. It is well with my soul. I believe there's one more still in our praise team. I don't want to try to talk about the Spirit said there's one more. There's one more. One more. This might be your last message. There's one more. There's one more. God wants somebody to leave here. Singing it is well. Because your sins are in glory. Covered by the blood of Jesus. To be raised one day. I believe there's one more church. Just pray. Just pray. When that one comes. Then pastor will pray. I know there's one more. God bless you. She's coming. Come on say amen church. Come on church of God and say amen down here. When the Holy Ghost is working, you're going to learn the work to bring people to Jesus. Come on down, my sister. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. One more still coming. God bless you. God bless you. Is there one more? Your head's about today. Your eyes are closed. If you're beside somebody, and you know they need to come in before the door is shut. Just hold their hand gently. And walk with them like the angels did to Lot in Sodom. And walk with them to the place of safety. Your heads are bowed. And your eyes are closed. We're going to pray now. Thank you for the time. Thank you for allowing the Holy Ghost to work. At the end of this verse, Pastor is going to pray. Pray also for the members. Members, we too, we too members, gonna clean up, gonna shape up, gonna live up, confess our sins so we can leave here singing. It is well. Members, you wanna make a recommitment today. Every member online, every member in the building. You want to make a recommitment today. Just raise your hands where you are. And say, Lord, I'm recommitting my life. So I can make it in when intercession is over. Raise your hands down there if that's your desire. The preacher is recommitting today. The preacher is recommitting. Confessing my sins to Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. You just made it in. You just made it in. 
You just made it in before the door is closed. Just made it in before the door is closed. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed as we pray today. Time. Give her some time to write on the card. Sing on, praise to him. Bear with us, brethren. This life is at stake here. Somebody's soul salvation is hanging in the balance. And God don't want anybody to leave here today without getting a chance to make it in. Without having their names engraved in the book of life. Oh, to be sing and the church say praise the Lord today the church say hallelujah the church say victory victory we have in Jesus your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed And in these solemn moments, while you bow your heads, think of that one who might not be standing at the altar right now, but who you want to see in God's kingdom. Maybe a husband, maybe a wife, maybe a child, maybe a parent, maybe a friend. Think of that one you want to see in God's kingdom. And while we pray, call that one's name in prayer in your heart. Uh, pray for someone standing at the altar. Look around this church and pray for someone in this church. We have to learn to pray for each other. So we can see each other into God's kingdom. So pray for somebody in this church. It is not only the pastor who will pray, but everybody in this church ought to be praying. I'm, I'm happy to know that God can hear all of us at once. We will not all pray out loudly, but we'll all pray in our hearts for somebody in this place, for somebody we need to see in God's kingdom. We heard a solemn word today. And I don't mean to prolong this, but it could be, it could be that there's yet one more. It could be, it just might be that there's yet someone else. I'm happy that the thief on the cross will make it in. I'm happy Oh, this was a final moment. Jesus was about to die. Yet someone made it in. I see a brother coming. There's yet room. Hallelujah! There's yet room for someone at the cross. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. He made it in right on time. Right on time. They both made it to the altar right on time. But that's, I, I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing. Because of Jesus could risk eternity to see you saved. How can I rush? If for his cause only we linger, then it's well worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. If for your cause God lingers, it's worth it. I won't pray till I get his card. When I think that God would remove my robe of unrighteousness and place on me his robe of righteousness. 
How can I rush it? Are you praying? Are you praying, church? I hope you're praying. Thank you. Thank you. I believe the Holy Spirit is in this place. He's drawing us nearer. Yet nearer to God Almighty. Nearer. Nearer my God. Now we pray, Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you that you would leave heaven, come down to earth just to see messed up lives restored, just to see brokenness made whole, just to see the sin, my lady, being washed from us by your blood. You left heaven, come down to earth. How could it be that you would take stock of an old sinner like me? How could it be that you who created the universes, you who created galaxies and stars who look down on a little planet called earth and see on this planet a speck a speck called Venkat and love him enough to die for my sins how could it be Lord, we marvel at how great a love you have for fallen humanity. We marvel, oh God, at the great love that would risk the unity of the Trinity to allow Jesus Christ to be made flesh, to dwell among us, and to die. But we are thankful, God. We are thankful that this Death has paid the price for every sinner everywhere in all generations. We are thankful that though we have not been righteous, though we have not lived according to your dictates, yet there is still hope. We are thankful that in our messed up condition mercy is with the Lord. We are thankful that your grace, your grace is sufficient. When we are least deserving your grace stretches out a hand. When uh, we ought to die for our sins your grace said no. We are thankful that when even the devil would have a problem with us you said I love you too much. Oh God, we thank you. And so, Father, all these have walked to the altar. Not because of Michael Henry. Not because of Venkot Dyer. Not even because of the Glendavon SDA Church. But they made a step of faith because of the blood of Jesus Christ. For only the blood has enough power to cleanse a sin-stained sinner. Only the blood of Jesus Christ has enough power to change the wayward life and restore the fallen pieces. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash us water than snow only the blood of Jesus Christ Lord there are broken hearts standing at this altar Lord they are backsliders standing at this altar Lord, there are those who have never walked with you standing at this altar. There are folks standing at this altar, God, who are wondering why I am standing here. But when you reveal to that heart that they are standing here because the Holy Ghost power hath drawn them unto you. Lord, some might, might be standing here right now feeling I was press to come here pastor you don't understand I didn't want to come but the, the press me to come and let me let, oh God we ask that to reveal to that heart 
that the words of man could never effect such a move. It is the pulling of the Holy Ghost. Lord, someone, rest someone restrain themselves in their seat. Amidst the call, amidst the appeal, someone retain their position. Oh God, help us to see that you left heaven and come down to earth for us. That you left and you walked up Gotha's hill for us. We ought to be willing to walk for you, but nonetheless, your mercy is still extended and your grace is still sufficient. So visit someone in their seat right now. God, I pray for that one watching online. Yes, Lord. I pray for that one who are struggling, struggling whether or not to write up that card to click on that link. We pray, Father, that we will send your Holy Spirit right now to visit that one. Yes, Jesus. Visit that one. Yes. They might be thinking, well, they can't see me in my living room, but oh God, I'm happy to know that you're an all-seeing God, that nothing escapes your view that you are seeing us and you see the end from the beginning we pray therefore God visit that one in her infirmities and help her to rise from when she has fallen Lord I pray for those who will be walking to the watery grave of baptism today anoint them afresh could it be Lord could it be that someone else needs to say yes Lord today is my day we pray Holy Spirit that you will fall afresh and we're joyful and we're thankful so take over the lives and the hearts of your people go home with them Holy Spirit to keep their feet from evil Bring us back here this afternoon and once again your man's servant shall trumpet the call. May you be glorified and exalted. These are many asking with thanksgiving through the matchless name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And amen. Brothers and sisters, There is still an opportunity for you to make today your day. You can make Jesus your choice today. But if not, do speak with one of our Bible counselors. They will be willing to walk you through the process. As those who are prepared for baptism will come forward at this time, I want to introduce to you, I want to introduce to you those who will be leading you through the process of Bible study and through the process of preparation for your baptism. So at this time, I'm going to be asking Pastor Morris. Where is Pastor Morris? Come, Pastor Morris. Where is Sister Douglas? She's standing. Sister Brown, Brother Ellis. Sister Douglas is standing over the side right there. Wait for us, Sister Douglas. Yes. Sister Douglas is right over there. Brother Ellis is in the aisle in that blue shirt. That's Brother Ellis right there. Uh, Sister Brown is standing all the way down the back. Uh, wait for us, Sister Brown, so the folks can see you. Yes, that smiling face. And Pastor Morris is right here. And uh, you will be seeing them throughout the week. They will be visiting with you to share with you the gospel. Welcome them and allow them to lead you to your complete surrender. At this time, invite our two candidates come forward as Pastor Morris will lead them through the baptismal vows at this time. The Lord is always blessing his church. What do you say? Amen. amen, amen. And so we rejoice this afternoon as God has called his two sons to stand today before him. My two brothers, at this moment, you will affirm your faith. I will not go through the 13 vows based upon time, so we'll go through 
the three condensed forms, okay? In agreement, you can raise your right hands, okay? In agreement. So, that, well, that's a test try, right? <laughs> All right. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Amen. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Amen. Do you desire, final one, to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes, offerings, and a life of service? Amen, amen, and amen. You have all seen them, church. They have affirmed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so at this point in time, from a baptized member of this church, could you please move the motion to accept our two brothers as members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, subject to their baptism? Do we have such a motion? Motion? So move. Seconded. All in favor? Raising of the right hand. Amen. Against? Carried. Amen. At this time, shall we pray? Father, this afternoon, we are happy that the preaching of the gospel is still alive and well. We are happy, loving Lord, that you have called your sons from darkness into the saving light of Jesus Christ. And so we place them into your divine hands. We ask you at this time, loving Lord, to fill them with Holy Ghost power for the journey. May you give them a fresh anointing from your presence, loving Lord. May you guide them, may you lead them into all righteousness, so that at the end, when you return in glory, may you grant unto them eternal access in your kingdom. For this is our prayer, this is our thanksgiving, for we pray and say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing for? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood? You washed in the blood of the Lamb. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing war? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you fully trusting in His grace this war? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you washed in the blood? And so, my brothers and sisters, we have young Ricardo Green in the pool at this time. A young man who has decided to walk for Jesus. Young man, I call upon you because you are strong. Those are the words of the Lord. And so, my brother, based upon the profession of your faith as ministers of the gospel, we do baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the sweet Holy Spirit, and let God's children say, Amen. Are you 
walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul that's in blood of the Lamb? All your garments for this are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? We have in the pool at this time, Arthur Gordon. He's saying, goodbye world, I stay no longer with you. And so, my brother, based on the profession of your faith, as ministers of the gospel, we do baptize you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the sweet Holy Spirit, and let God's children see. Amen. This afternoon, we have witnessed the mighty power of God as he works through the Holy Spirit to call people from darkness into his marvelous light. And so, pastor is still in the pool. If you are here and you so desire to say, Lord, I will not leave this place until I turn over my life to you. You can come at this point in time. The water is still troubled. You can step right in. If there is such an individual, you can walk at this point in time. Let us pray. Loving Lord and our God, we are happy that you are still God. We are happy, Lord, that you are walking up and down in Glendavan, in Norwood, loving Lord, and you are pulling people from the bosom of sin. We are happy, loving Lord, that we could have witnessed your two sons as they have turned over their lives to you by means of the power of the Holy Spirit working on their lives. We thank you, Father, that amidst death, amidst darkness, you are still a caring parent. You are still caring for us, loving Lord. You are still visiting us. You are still protecting us. Even though we are wayward in our ways, you are still running after us. Indeed, your goodness and your mercies, they are running after us. And so, Father, teach us how to serve you. Teach us how to walk in your ways. May you grant unto us, O God, your divine benediction. May as we depart, Father, may you navigate us.
But may you take us back here this evening, Father, where we will hear the droplets of your word once more from your man's servant, Evangelist Michael Henry. Bless us now as we wait upon your mercies and say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Okay, and so my brothers and sisters, today was indeed a powerful day in Zion, and we look forward for more this evening. We are asking you to come out and to bring as many uh, visitors as you can encourage individuals to join online those who can't come but our desire is that we will report to the host yes that we will all come and gather together for this prophetic event even the powerful preaching of the everlasting gospel and so we take our break you can make calls invite others during that time during your lunch time we resume at four for bible class bible class will be four to five and then come five our adventist youth will lead out in the final session when the man of God will preach the word of God. So let's bear that in mind and let's continue to pray for the work that is being done here. God bless you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say Just over in the glory. 
Oh!